Hello for Sunday, April 18th, 2021. This is Trinity United Church in the West End of Edmonton, Alberta. We are in the traditional territory and the home of those First Nations which signed Treaty 6, including Cree, Ojibwe, and Assiniboine peoples, also part of the Métis Nation. We're also an affirming congregation, striving always toward inclusion and participation by all, appreciating the diversity of sexual orientation and gender expression. Welcome to Trinity United Church. Jesus said, I will be with you always to the end of the time. Let us pray. Stay with us, blessed stranger. For the day is far spent, and we have not yet recognized your face in each of our sisters and brothers. Stay with us, blessed stranger. For the day is far spent, and we have not yet shared your bread in grace with our brothers and sisters. Stay with us, blessed stranger. For the day is far spent, and we have not listened to your word in the words of our sisters and brothers. Stay with us, blessed stranger, because our very night becomes day when you are there. Amen. Today we have two scripture readings. The first is from the first letter to John of John in chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who do, does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Second reading is from the Gospel according to Luke in chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened and why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. 
This is part of our sacred story. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to begin by having you think about ghosts. Now, some people don't think about ghosts at all. It never enters their conscious mind to think about ghosts. And there are other people who put great stock into the idea and the existence of ghosts. Some people would maybe rather speak of them as spirits and declare how that's different than a ghost. And that's a task that I will not be bothered with at this time. And then there are others, probably like myself, that um, really don't think of ghosts unless I come across a movie or a book that is in that realm of fantasy. It's interesting to see how things develop. It's interesting to think about what they be, might be like. But then when the movie is over, or when the book is finished, um, I return to my physical world as always. I've come to realize that in popular culture, there's a regularly recurring interest in ghosts. There are old movies about ghosts and there are contemporary movies about ghosts. There are old ghost stories and new. A little while ago, I downloaded a free ebook about a private detective who worked with ghosts. Strange as that, that sounds, it's, um, it was a kind of a fun read, nothing more than that, really. Apparently, he had a, a sustained a, a head injury and then was now able to see ghosts around him. Trouble with that is, he couldn't tell who were ghosts around him and who were the living, breathing people around him. I took it as a fantasy, of course, and it was interesting, but it wasn't life-changing by any means. I've noticed with these ghost stories, movies, books, um, that ghosts are usually all about two things, fear, and vengeance. Now, occasionally you'll have a story that might have a ghost bringing a comforting presence, a, a feeling of peace and well-being, but that seems to be rare. More often, it seems, within the culture of telling these stories, they haunt a space and they bring a sense of fear and dread. The other theme that I see developed with ghost stories is that they also seek vengeance on the living humans that harm them in life. The bullies who tormented them in life, or if it goes that far, the enemy who caused their death. Fear and vengeance and ghosts. It's no wonder that the stories often fall in the genre of horror, if not only just fantasy. Now, I started talking about ghosts because our gospel story talks about ghosts. Or rather, if I'm going to be accurate, our gospel story talks, in the Gospel of Luke, talks about not ghosts. In the resurrection stories, of Jesus from the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel writer goes to great lengths to assure us and his followers that the risen Jesus is not a ghost. Jesus, risen from the grave, resurrected from the dead, seems to understand that his disciples and followers would indeed be bewildered by him. They would not understand and they would come to the conclusion that he must be a ghost. I wonder, just offhand, I wonder what ghost, what ghost stories must have been like in that part of the ancient world at that time. That's just a kind of a curious aside question. But Jesus came to those bewildered, heartbroken followers to bring them to understand. He wanted them to understand, and especially he wanted them to bear witness to this truth. 
So he came to them and said, come close, come close. Look at me. Touch my hands and my feet. Feel that I am real. Let me have something to eat. Some fish, perhaps. Common daily food. So here is the message then from Luke. The risen Jesus is real, not a specter, not a ghost, but real. Real in flesh and skin and bone and a working digestive system. We come to this reading today in the season of Easter as we are, and we ask, well, why is this important? Why is it important that the faith of the church holds on to this story with flesh and bone and skin? The first answer that I come to with this question goes back to my very observations about ghosts and ghost stories. Now, as I said, I don't know what ghost stories were like in the ancient world at that time, but I know what contemporary ghost stories can be like. And the risen Jesus is not about haunting and instilling fear. He is not risen to make us scared or terrified. And by the same token, the risen Jesus is not about exacting vengeance on those who hurt him or betrayed him. The risen Jesus is skin and bone and flesh because he was known in skin and bone and flesh. He lived his life bodily in his body. We tell, we tell stories of Jesus walking and talking with his friends and followers, teaching them as they walked bodily functions. We tell of him, of him eating and drinking with those who were outcast, a bodily function. He would touch the bodies of people who were in need of healing. He would hold close to him those who would feel his great compassion. The body functions. The body is integral to his ministry. It was in his body, flesh and blood and skin and bone, that he knew what pain and torture and beating were. And it was in that body that where he knew the full extent of all human suffering. He knew what hearts and minds and bodies can endure and what they finally can no longer endure. We know our human condition in the bodies we inhabit. Jesus knows the human condition in the body in which he brought before his friends, his followers, in their unknowing and bewildered state. Jesus came to his followers and his friends in a bodily state because we need assurance that he is intimately in touch with the strength and the frailty, the healing and the scars, the living and the dying, of our bodies, that our bodies and our lives endure. If we are known in our bodies by the one who is love itself, then we must honor the bodies of others. When we hear the cry these days that black lives matter, Indigenous lives matter. The lives of people of color matter. It's because those bodies have not been honored. And they have not been honored in the way that Jesus honors the bodies of all who are called the children of God. In the end scene, after Jesus showed 
showed them his flesh and his skin and his body. He taught them so that they would understand and make their way through their own bewilderment. He taught them so that they would know and understand there is a way forward. There is a way forward. Call it repentance and forgiveness of sins, as it says in the scripture, but it's a way forward. It's a way forward. There is a future. And finally, he said that there that they were witnesses, witnesses of all these things. And perhaps that's the most important message for us as we go forward in faith. We are witnesses to the honoring and the valuing of our human bodies. We are witnesses that God knows intimately our human condition. God knows our strengths and our weaknesses, knows our growing, changing, aging, and wearing down bodies that we inhabit, knows what we can bear and what we are not able to bear. We are witnesses that God opens the future for us, for all of us. This is so much, so much more than a ghost story, or should I say, a not a ghost story. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to the risen one. Amen. About a year ago, I offered this prayer to the community and as I realize um, as I read it over I realize it still speaks to us today in Psalm 16 it begins protect me O God for in you I take refuge today O God we pray for ourselves we have prayed for others and we will continue to pray for others there are people working hard. There are people dying and grieving. There are people struggling with health and recovery. There are people struggling with having enough. We will not forget them. But today we also pray for ourselves. Today we slow down our thoughts and listen to our feelings. You know what is in our hearts. You know the fluttering birds of our thoughts and the feelings that will not take rest. As Jesus came to his friends in a time of fear, come to us in the confusion and worry of this day. Help us to find our strength in you. Help us to rest, truly rest, that we may emerge with clearer thinking and courage in our being. God, we miss our friends. We miss the people that we see each week. We may speak with communication technology. We may write and text and email and Zoom. Still, we miss the touch of the hand, the glint of an eye, the voices raised in shared praise. We keep saying that we will get through this together. Be with us in that together. And Psalm 16 closes by saying, you show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So be it. And we close with the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace that you may 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, abound in hope through the grace of Jesus, the risen one. Amen.